Are we looking at what is going to soon be called Tropical Storm Gonzalo? The National Hurricane Center says 90% chance we are. And welcome back, everybody. July 21st, 2020, 2.57 p.m. Man, this day's flying. All right, so National Hurricane Center updates for you here. We have two pretty significant invests going on. There's technically three. We will get into that. We do have this one that kind of formed right off the coast of Texas and Louisiana, not counting this one where you see the area of uncertainty with this invest here, 40% chance. This is currently under South Florida. The main concern right now as far as which of these will probably be a bigger deal is the 90% chance of cyclone formation out in the Atlantic more, heading towards the Lesser Antilles and the uh, Leeward Islands. Now, this thing jumped from 20% to 90% fairly quick. And more times than not, when we're talking about cyclones, the, uh, the uptick in that percentage usually means there was some rapid intensification or rapid formation with that storm. So when we do look at the infrared loop, we can see why this thing is definitely an invest. We have the counterclockwise spin going on underneath the colors you see here. Those lower level clouds are being pulled in a counterclockwise direction as these storms begin to kind of stick together and become bigger. Now, there's going to be a little more time we need to really see this thing develop, but the fact that it went up to 90% tells us that there's not much in the way to stop this thing. And what I mean by that are the different um, highs and low pressures going on in the Bermuda Atlantic bubble that we talk about, the different stuff going on in the Gulf and in the uh, South Caribbean, as well as the Sahara dust cloud. Now, we've talked about that a few times. If we jump over to Mike's weather page here, very good source for uh, weather information, we could find that Sahara dust cloud Right here, you can see it, and we kind of have a break in between here. Um, I'll go ahead and click this for you so we can take a look at it real quick. So, as you guys can see, we have a big plume of uh, Sahara dust coming off the west side of Africa, making its way along that warm water belt, the same path basically the hurricanes take. And we have a break in between, and a lot of times this sand um, can subdue these storms from forming. And, of course, we get one little break in the sand, and, and, and we jump right into the possibility of cyclone formation. And it really does happen that quick, guys. We are in the, the heat of hurricane season right now. Of course, uh, the end of August and September are, are pretty key time periods for the season. But um, you can see it with your own eyes. When this sand is not in place, we are getting the formation of cyclones. And you can see it right down in here. It's actually beginning to suck in some of that lighter sand um, according to this chart. So it doesn't take much to really aid these, these storms or... Um, basically disable them if you want to put it that way too. So what our main concern right now is is to keep an eye on the path of this thing. We can see this black line with the triangles here. That is the current direction the storm is traveling and these spaghetti plots here are where the different um, weather stations and things like that are predicting that this storm would go. Um, it's hard to really go into predictions besides a, a broad base, which is what we have here. We can kind of see all these spaghetti plots are heading in a similar direction, and then as time goes on, after they pass the Leeward and Lesser Antilles Islands, it kind of spreads out a little bit, and the, uh, the ideas of where the storm is going to go gets a little... Uh, wider based on the fact that there's so much time going on between now and that period. So we do have time to watch this. We're going to watch it grow. Absolutely. It's definitely going to intensify more than likely become a named tropical storm. Again, it would be either Gonzalo or Hannah, depending on if this invest here in South Florida, which we'll look at now, and it is named Invest 91L. So we are taking a look at both of these. We have Invest 91L. We have 99L, which is the one we just spoke about, the one expected to make its way through the Lesser Antilles and the Leeward Islands. And then we have Invest 90L, which we spoke about yesterday, which was our third invest, um, basically inland already by Texas. So we dealt with this yesterday. Um, still a noticeable invest. I doubt this thing is going to pull back out into the Gulf and then reform. Um, I think we're looking at the ending of Invest 90L, but right on its heels, obviously, guys, is 91L. So that is the closest storm we have right now. Um, as far as risk goes, I want to say 99L is something we need to watch um, a little closer as far as a strengthening storm. Um, this one, 91L, is closer to land already, so it doesn't have as much time to get in there and do the damage that a, a full-blown hurricane would do. But then again, the Gulf is big, guys. We can have a lot of formation in a short period of time when it comes to the Gulf, especially as warm as the water is right now. 
all you'd have to really do is go to the tropical intensity index chart and you can clearly see the areas in red are highly favorable for cyclone formation so we're basically in the brunt of it right now so anywhere these storms go including the invest in the gulf uh, they are in highly favorable conditions for cyclone formation and that's what we really need to look out for and if you look really quickly and if we get these charts side by side you can see here area being monitored development possible that's that yellow color we're looking at with the gulf storm and now we have the area being monitored development very likely with the red the one heading towards the lesser Antilles. Uh, islands as of right now so that is the update as far as the tropical situation going on in the Atlantic Ocean I will be back with updates one more thing I actually want to run by you guys is the reasoning for these storms staying so low uh, we talked about this briefly but I'll touch on it again so if we picture the one storm right here and then we got the other one in the Gulf here we look at the Bermuda high pressure this is called the Bermuda Atlantic bubble it's the Atlantic Ocean high pressure bubble that is constantly there whether it's morphing this way or morphing towards the US all it does is push the pressure lines into the states or down into the Gulf and currently these lines are coming down very far south almost to the equator and kind of pinching into the southeast states so any weather or any uh, low pressure systems are going to be forced underneath and around that that uh, high pressure bubble so that's what's keeping this storm uh, down near these islands here and then it wants to come back up once that pressure releases so we'll dive more into that type of stuff as this storm nears and we'll have a separate video for this invest here uh, thank you guys again for uh, tuning in and uh, continuing to watch the channel I really appreciate it and we got Gonzalo and Hannah next I will be back with an update shortly be safe everybody I will talk to you soon thank you